good morning there, uh, YouTube. <laughs> Excuse me. I-95 South crossing over the, uh, I think that's it, Jones River. Uh, heading southbound. We're still in Virginia on the uh, west, to the east side of uh, Richmond. I'm about to get on 95 South. But, uh, I just wanted to come to you all on this glorious, glorious morning. I don't know if I said that weapon on the road again with you, but <laughs> I told y'all about that memory. Anyway, heading on down this road, got a good night's sleep. I uh, shut it down last night about midnight or so. Once I got a salad in, and got, me, got me a salad, chicken seed salad. Found me a parking spot over at the, uh, after I had to go, I got a truck wash. No, I got fuel, got a salad for the love, went across the street, got a truck wash, and then went across the interstate to find me a parking spot, because those two places didn't have any parking spot. So I'm going to mark that one I went to, uh, it's a pilot on Flying J going south, yeah, southbound on 95. Exit 104 right there in Rutherland Glen, but it's on the west side of the interstate. And uh, it looked crowded. It looked crowded, but they had some reserved spots available. But then, um, you know, I kept going in and I found two spots that were for me. You know, that, that was like a, that was a piece of gold I found. I found two spots side by side. And that way, I, all I had to do was just, you know, back in, you know, best I could or whatever, because it was tight, but it was two spots side by side, and I had enough room to just get in with one shot, you know. And uh, the only problem I had, the guy that was behind me, he had parked over the line, and because I sit about 80 feet long, my hood sat out further. So that was a you know, something that was on my mind all night, but, you know, once I fell asleep, I fell asleep. Other than that, we're having a good morning, road down this road. I got 700 miles to do today. We get down to Hawthorne, Florida. I think I told y'all that last night. And uh, that put us about 35 miles from uh, Ocala. Take care of Ocala tomorrow morning, and then head to Orlando tomorrow mid-morning. And then I'll probably head to a lack after that to uh, get loaded on Friday. And we'll stage the load and uh, head home. But for right now, that's all we got. Uh, so if we got a long ride today, we'll come back with something just for us. Uh, I want to talk about trucking wise or life wise. I've been thinking it doesn't have to all, always be about trucking. You know, whichever way God leads me to or at least need to talk about whatever. You know, uh, no, I'm not a preacher. <laughs> I am a believer. I, you know, I try to, you know, give examples of what happened in my life, or if I can, you know, and just, the main thing I like to do is we can treat each other good, you know. Well, like I said, we'll, uh, i get back with you on that point. I'm just getting, trying to get around to 95 South and, We'll make it happen. Um, get a little more praise and worship for you. Make it on down this road. We'll holler back at you. Well, good morning there, YouTube. Uh, where are we? We're down here somewhere. We're just south of uh, Kenley, North Carolina. Uh, Market 93. Uh, it's about 11 20. And make a pretty good time here. Thought I'd come to you all. Uh oh. And as soon as I say that, we run into a little traffic. And as soon as I say that. <laughs> look at that, look at that, look at that. I get y'all turned around here momentarily. I leave the right lane clear. Yeah, look at that boy. I'll tell you, I'll show y'all here in a minute. Eating my breakfast here. Four on eggs from the truck stop. Right lane closed ahead. Um, oh, don't let it be too bad for too long. I might not turn y'all around 
anyway, I boiled eggs and coffee. Coffee is below lukewarm. Yeah. And it's black. Yeah. It's an acquired taste. I don't do the uh, the adult crack coffee. The adult candy. That's all that is. I shouldn't say crack, but it is addictive. Um, been on the CB a little bit this morning with one fella going down the road talking about containers and I learned something today from him. Cause he all he pulled his containers, but they're what they call 20 footers. I'm gonna see if I can find a picture of him and put it in there for you. Uh, what he pulls, excuse me, right here. But, um, you know, he's pulling those containers, they're only 20 feet long with the container accepted. I'm assuming the, uh, the actual trailer is a little bit longer than that. I know it is. Probably a 35, 38 foot trailer. But, uh, yeah, right lane closed down here, driving. But, um... Appreciate it. You know, um... I just lost my train of thought. But he's pulling some heavy weight in that, that short distance. You know, from nose of the truck to the rear of the trailer. You know, I guess they're stop trailers. I'm gonna look it up and see. But he's pulling, you know, he said he's grossing out 105, 108,000 pounds on some of his loads. And they pulling out of the port and he's doing whatever. But I didn't know they were that long. I mean, that heavy. Um, in that short amount of space because I'm used to having, having to sp spread that weight out. You know, and, and what I do. So I learned something from him. He was an old timer. I forget what he said. His name, Crazy Horse. That was his name, Crazy Horse, coming down here. Sorry about that. But anyway, he um, just talked to him about 15, 20 minutes going down the road. But um, got a PSA for you all. And I think y'all heard this before from me. <laughs> Merging onto the highway, good people. Merging onto the highway. It is a pet peeve of every driver. You know, and we see it every day. And not that it affects me more, but for me, and the loads I pull, you know, we're heavy, we're long, we're wide sometimes. And we see a car coming on, and I got an escort, and we have a decision to make at that instant. If we can get over right then, if not, we stay in that lane if we can't get over, because it's that person that's getting onto the interstates, it's their prerogative to match the speed or greater or less if that matter you got to go ahead and discern that before you get on this highway that's why you have the acceleration lane onto the highway and certain states Pennsylvania certain, certain parts of Texas Maryland, especially Northeast and some out west they have a short acceleration lane or merging lane, however you want to call it. I call it acceleration lane because at that point, what I've taught my kids and other people I've taught to drive is when you're getting onto that interstate, when you make that left or right turn onto the interstate, you are already looking to see what the speed of the interstate is, what's coming. You're not straightforward like this, and until you get down next to the interstate, then you start looking, oh crap, here's a, a, a big truck. Here's a wide load, here's another vehicle. Because now you all, you're putting pressure on that person that's in that lane to go ahead and get over. Even though as truck drivers, we're taught to look further down the road and we're always taught to have an out. We're always told to have an out. Yeah, we get past the construction now. I think, yeah, it's just bridge work. We're always taught that, but Sometimes there's not an out, and or the only out is to stay where you are because I can't move over because Sally and, and, and what's the name don't see you coming down. They don't know. You know, little Johnny, little Sally over here, like I said before, probably picking their nose or whatever and doing whatever. They have no idea, they, and they shouldn't because I'm in this lane. I'm in that right lane. You know, they're in that fast lane, so they should be going by me anyway. 
but most of the time they don't because for some odd reason, you four wheelers, six wheelers, sometimes you camper drivers like to sit beside these trucks and these loads and admire them. I have I have stuck my hand out the window and hey get on. Let's go. Because you don't know what's over here. Because Mary, Joe and John over here just looked up and the acceleration lane is about to run out. Or the merging lane is about to run out. Please people. Pay attention to what you're doing. When you come down that ramp, come up that ramp, however it's going, already be actively looking at that interstate. Because if I'm coming down that road at 45, 50 miles an hour and I got 200 some 300,000 pounds coming down that road, I'm gonna do my best to get over for you. And sometimes we ride in that lane because of that fact, getting in and out, going back and forth from lane to lane is rough on the trailer, it's rough on the mindset of the driver and the escort. So we may ride that, if it's three, lane, three lanes, we're gonna, we're gonna ride that middle lane, depending on the size of the weight. You know, the size of the load, rather. So that's why we're there. We're not there for craps and giggles. We're there for the safety of the, the, uh, the public. We're trying to make sure that you walk and merge on and get on. We're not there just to, you know, just to twiddle our thumbs and hold up traffic. You know, now the two-lane road, we're going to sit in this lane. Now, I've had jobs and, and loads where we, when we get on these two-lane roads, like I'm on now, you know, we had to, we, we, I've been 20 feet wide, so we cover both lanes. And what we do is we ride for 100, 200 miles, and we get off where we can, or for three lane come up, we move over. But we got to get these loads where they got to get to. But people, please, be active in driving. Be alert when you're driving. Get off your phones. Stop talking to whoever and concentrate on getting onto this highway safely because we always can't move over. 90% of I was not saying that bad. 70 to 80% of the time we can't move over. Now you got some butthole drivers. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we're perfect. But for the most part guys like myself and I know some of my co-workers we ain't trying to take nobody's life. But I'm going to tell you this. Hear me well. If I got an oversized load, I am not going to turn that load over to miss you. Because if I turn that load over to miss you and you gone, it's all on me because I try to avoid you. I'm not going down nobody's ramp or off the side of the road to avoid missing you when you were wrong. You know, now if I'm flying, I rarely ever do and I'm not being alert yeah that's on me but for the most part daytime driving is what I do for the most part with them wide loads oversized loads I'm going to make sure I take care of you the best I can but if you racing up to get in front of me and you get in front of me and you hit your brakes I'm going to try my best to stop but if I can't you coming with me because if I if I lose my load and you go ahead and get, get on down to the beach Get on to your destination. I don't have, unless these cameras are really working, I have no recourse. It's all on me. It's all on my company. I don't want to hit you. But now that's the mindset of the driver, especially this driver, that hey, I gotta take you with me. I'm not trying to take you out, but then you're gonna have to say your part of the story. But I know what mine is. You got in front of me, you slowed down. Because we have big tires and big brakes, and we have all these axles, it does not mean we can stop getting faster. It does not mean that. Empty or full, because when we're empty, we can slide, when we pull, that, that all that weight we got behind us is carrying us forward. I can have 13 axles up on this girl, and it'll still take me up every, every bit of a football field and a half to stop, depending on how fast we're going, depending on the, the weight of the load. Y'all be careful, like, you know, just open your eyes up. I'm not saying that truck drivers are perfect, but what I am saying is be mindful of your surroundings when you're getting on this road, because it's dangerous out here. You know, it's very, very dangerous out here for the last few days. You know, let, yeah, we've had some things go out and go on on this road or whatever that I've seen up on the front. And it's real like these folks are losing their life, you know, all the time. Be careful out here, you know, just understand that we try to
destination just like you are. Be mindful. Stop all this racing. I know we're gonna, you know, young folks are gonna be stupid. You know, we all were at one point in time. But uh, understand, getting on and off this highway, and you see a big truck, don't sit beside it. Right side, left side, don't sit. You know, when we leave a gap there, when you see an opening, there's two or three trucks, links, or car links, you know, of space. I'll get over there and slow down. We left that gap for a reason, so we won't be on that car or that truck's behind. Just in case something happens, we didn't leave it there for you. Now, if you're going to do something with it, you got to get off, do your thing. Don't hit your brakes in front of me because you don't know what I'm carrying. It's like I didn't know that guy carried up to over 100,000 pounds in a 38. You know, he's only 25. He might be 50 feet long. I didn't know that they carried that much weight on those trailers because they're not marked, because they're not oversized. But he only has one, two, three, uh, four, five, six axles. Trying to stop 105,000 pounds sometimes. Total weight, truck trailer and load. You know, that's a lot of weight to stop. So please, people, just be mindful. I'm getting up on 13 minutes here. Y'all be mindful of what you got going on around you all. Know that we're not trying to do anything to, to uh, jeopardize your life. You know, like I said, we got some butthole drivers out here. Four wheelers and 18 wheelers. But to do your part to be safe. Do your part to get home safe to your destination or whatever. I'm going to do mine. I'm definitely going to do mine. I don't want it by life on my conscience. But I will I will compartmentalize you. That's my son calling. I'll hit y'all later. construction slowdowns. I think I talked to you all for a minute. I did 600 and... No. I don't even know how many miles I did at that point. You have zero hours I drove eight hours straight. Drive time. I think like 500 and some change straight. I mean... And I drove for 10 hours and 54 minutes. Pulled off 709 miles. Said about like 66 miles to that miles to the hour. <laughs> I averaged 600 miles. I mean, I was, I was 66 miles an hour. What I averaged. Says here, seven, yeah, I'm off by nine miles. I'm a GPS. But yeah, we uh, since March. Now, March and April first, I've done four thousand miles in two weeks. It's there about two thousand miles a week. I still got about let's see. Still got one hundred nineteen miles to finish up this run, and then I go to Palatka from Orlando. I think it's 100 miles. I leave out again on Sunday. So after Friday when I get home, I would have ran about another 200, 300, about another four or 500 miles between now and Friday. Yeah, Friday afternoon. But anyway, we are Sitting here in Hawthorne, I'm about to go ahead and get me a salad or something and we'll work out before I go to bed. I can't, I'm not gonna leave here till about 7 30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Right now it is 8 30. So after my 10 hours are up, um, that'll be 6 30 in the morning. I can leave at that point, but where I got to go is only uh, 35 miles from here, I think. Let's see. Uh, Let's see, 35 miles from here. So, yeah, um, you know, 30 minute rides. So I leave here about 7, 7.30, 7.45. Get there between 8 and 8.30. Get down to Orlando, get 
there between now and it ain't gonna take them long to get this off. So it's just a Ford lift uh, pickup. And go from there. Well, other than that, good people, we're gonna uh, call it quits for the night. I appreciate it as always. Um, you know, I know I talked about accelerating onto the highway earlier today. And that is one of, that is a huge pet peeve for this truck. But I'm gonna I'm try to do some more stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna try to navigate my way into personal things or things that bother me, but you know, be it whatever. Um, but uh, on well, my long runs like that or whatever, especially when I don't have an escort, because it seems to be hard for me to, uh, it's hard for me to concentrate but I gotta have that thing that CB on. I was just say concentrate, but just get my words out. But um, other than that, good people, you know, y'all be good to one another as always. Continue to uh, help each other out. This world needs more love, more love, more love, less hate. Just continue being, you know, delighted in the tunnel. You are not the train. You are, you are a guide. Uh, you know, be a lamp. Be a guide. Trust yourself, trust God, cheap right out.